Bills time. Uh, y'all know how I live, rap. This is my daily duty, you know what I mean? Uh. Now, now, right now, this is nothing that I condone as a rapper or a comedian. But I honestly don't care and never understood why anyone gives a fuck about it anyway. If the fans don't care who wrote it, you can't complain either. That's it. Y'all can't throw dirt on Kevin Hart and Drake names for not writing all of their material, then go and praise Richard Pryor as a great when he clearly got help from Paul Mooney. Both R.I.P. Paul Mooney and R.I.P. Richard Pryor. Make some noise for them. Right? But yo, we also... Praise Puff and Dre as rap icons, knowing that they have known ghostwriters and ghost producers for years, right? I'm not lying. I'm not saying Richard Pryor, Puff, and Dre aren't iconic legends. Of course they are. You know, they're greats. But I'm also not saying that they're ever able to be viewed as the greatest because of that help, right? I'm just saying for what we know. That's all. Respect to all, but the ones that did it the best and on their own... Yo, those are the comedians I put on my official six grandfathers mountain list of greatest comedians. Yeah, I ain't forget about that motherfucking Mount Rushmore boycott. We still on their motherfucking racist ass necks. Yeah. But before I conclude and break down my six grandfathers of comedy, let me explain how I ended up thinking and picking these comedians up in the first place. Because this is all personally my opinion, right? The main question I've been getting since I started doing the comedy is, yo, how would you describe your style of comedy? Now, at first, that was a bit confusing for me because, like I said, I want to be a great and stand out as a unique stand-up comedian. Yeah, you feel me? But the more I thought about it, it made me realize that through all of those years of studying these comedians in their natural habitat, I have noticed that certain comedians have mastered approaches that are very similar to how I approach the mic. And yo, my approach is based off my personality and experiences. You know me, you know I'm all over the place. But the key to my approach is just being real, raw, and honest at all times. Yeah. So like the attributes that divide my style of comedy, the ones that I'm trying to master basically is bravery, sarcasm, honesty, helpfulness, wittiness, intelligence swag being rude and a motherfucking revolutionary real motherfucking talk my six grandfathers have all mastered at least two of these attributes you know some of them got all first off the first grandfather is the baba dick gregory make some noise for dick gregory yeah that's our ancestor r.i.p but yo, Gregory's revolutionary honesty made him a legendary comedian and activist. For me, that makes the Baba the grandfather of all grandfathers. Make some noise in the name of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, right? But yo, my second grandfather is George Carlin. Make some noise for George Carlin. Shit. I know I'm a Pan-African, Asiatic black man and all that, but this white motherfucker here... <laughs> He's in the league of his own. Yo, George Carlin is basically the second grandfather for me because of his bravery to touch on topics that were taboo and provide helpful, honest, and sarcastic perspectives. Yo, he did this for years too, generations. So, you know, this makes him a grandfather for me, right? Yeah, make some noise for George Carlin. My third grandfather is the ancestor Patrice O'Neill. Make some noise for motherfucking Patrice O'Neill. Yeah. Yo, he's a grandfather for me for his hilarious ability to fuse witty, honest thoughts with a brave and rude delivery. Gotta respect that. All right. Make some noise for Patrice O'Neill again, our ancestor. Now, the next on the list is the fourth grandfather, and that's the now sister Cat Williams. Yeah, make some noise for Cat Williams. That's a god amongst kings of comedy. <laughs> no pun intended, harmfully. Right? But yo, he's the Mayweather of comedians. Undefeated, hated, lied on, but self-made and in control of his own career. You gotta give it up for him. Make some noise for Cat Williams. Now, my fifth grandfather is Dave Chappelle. Make some noise for Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Now, Dave Chappelle's a grandfather for me. Because he always provided a helpful, balanced contribution 
and always was revolutionary in the culture. And the longevity and constant progress he'd been making. Everybody, even now with the podcast, we tune into that. Everything Dave Chappelle do, touches, we on it. So make some noise for Dave Chappelle. Right? Yeah. And now my last but not least grandfather is the now sister, living legend, Corey Holcomb. Make some noise for Corey motherfucking Holcomb. When we talking about helpful and honest with realness, she, Corey Holcomb is the GOAT. From last comic standing to his weekly podcast, 5150, he's been consistent and self-made like a boss. So, yo, make some noise for Corey Holcomb. And, yo, make some noise for all six of the grandfathers. Those are my personal grandfathers, respectfully. I'm not saying they're the top-selling comedians or most popular. I honestly don't care what anyone thinks of my list. I don't want to debate to divide and conquer ourselves anyway. These six comedians are the masters to what I view as the building blocks to my style of comedy. <laughs> right. Before I leave, let me just make one more thing motherfucking clear though. I'm only giving these legends their flowers. I'm not ever considering or planning on stealing their jokes or anything like that. <laughs> gotta, that gotta be said. I see in here that a lot of comedians nowadays seem to be comfortable with that. But, like I said earlier, <laughs> we already mentioned Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Yo, I'm out. My line flat. And even to the flat line beat, I'm a still spit raps. This ain't gonna never stop. It's Bills. Hey yo, my word is born, long as I'm a flow I'm 